Hi everyone, I'm Dan, uh, one of the directors of BDI Resourcing. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you about international recruitment in the NHS uh, and how we can help with that. So a few bits about the process, uh, where we find our candidates and how we can source them for you. Um, this will be just a, a broad overview, so if you do have any specific questions or there's anything that's unclear, drop us an email. Uh, Gabby will put all the contact details up at the end of the video. Okay, so why use an international recruitment campaign? Um, the main reason that NHS trusts come to us and, uh, and decide to work with us uh, tend to be that there's either a local shortage of doctors and nurses, so they've put adverts out perhaps once, twice, three times, and they're not receiving any applicants, uh, or they're receiving lots of applicants and actually no one's coming through to actually starting with them. That's another issue. Um, we also tend to work quite a lot with trusts who have got heavy reliance on agency locum doctors um, and that's not the short-term doctors and nurses that work with the NHS to plug gaps but actually the ones where um, you perhaps had a locum in post for six months or 12 months or maybe even five years and uh, there's no sign of them going away so we can work to actively uh, replace those doctors with international doctors. Okay, so the reason that we actually established BDI Resourcing and the thing that we're really, really passionate about is sourcing international doctors who are highly, highly skilled um, and making sure that they can work in the NHS. There's actually a huge, huge process for an international doctor to register to work here. So we aim to disseminate uh, information um, regarding that, that process. So we'll help doctors with their IELTS, with their uh, Royal College examinations, with relocation itself, with getting tier two visas, with all of the pre-employment checks and GMC registration checks that come along the way. Um, and by assisting them, we're actively increasing the pool of doctors that are working in the NHS uh, and making them available to you as an NHS trust. Okay, so you might be thinking, well, why don't I just put a job advert up and some international doctors will apply. Um, the main reason that they don't is purely because of that process and how long it takes and how much uh, help they need along the way before they even get to the stage of making a job application. Um, so where do we actually find our candidates? Well, we pick them up very, very early on in that process. Um, we've got a team of 20 recruiters who essentially um, have created a network, if you like, of around 30,000 doctors who are all at some stage in that process. So some will be sitting their English language exams, some will be sitting their Royal College exams, uh, some will be working their way through their GMC registration already. Um, by working through that network every single month we generate probably 200 senior doctors, so that's Royal College examination passed, uh, an English language exam passed, GMC registration in process, uh, candidates that we can then put forward to you as an NHS client. Uh, junior doctors, probably three to 400 per month as well. Um, so we've got access to a huge, huge pool of doctors and because of the assistance that we've given them over the last 12 months, 18 months, maybe even two years in some cases, um, they trust our judgment on where we should place them. So. If you're an NHS trust in a, in a tricky to fill uh, location, we can perhaps put the positives across to one of those doctors um, about maybe how you've got an excellent CQC report where you can offer them excellent CESA support and training. Okay, so the, the actual process for an international recruitment project. Um, it's actually not too dissimilar to your own recruitment. So uh, the semantics of arranging interviews and the interview process itself will be exactly the same. The offer letter stage, exactly the same. Um, what we would usually advise is that we either have an in-depth telephone conversation with the key stakeholders in your department, so perhaps a, a lead consultant, uh, a service manager, director manager, your HR department should always be involved too, um, to ensure that we've got all of the details we need and we can pass those across to the candidates to give the best chance of when you do make an offer, those candidates actually accepting it. Um, We'll then present you with a, a long list of CVs for you to review um, based on the preferences you've given us. You may say to us, for example, if you're recruiting radiologists that you only want to see 
FRCR radiologists with two years of experience in interventional, for example. Um, we'll present as many CVs to you as we can, usually a long list of perhaps five to ten, and you can shortlist from there for whichever you would like to interview. You might want to interview them all, or you might have specifically two, three candidates that you'd like to speak with. Um, the interview stage itself, you may be used to doing face-to-face -face interviews, and ideally, of course, we would always arrange that if we could, and if doctors are in the country at the time, um, but you'd need to fully appreciate that most of these doctors are international candidates, so we rely on technology like Skype um, to, to ensure that we can reach out to them wherever they are in the world. Um, we'll give you all of the Skype IDs, we'll set up the schedule for the interviews, you just give us the times. Um, so we'll make the process as straightforward as we possibly can. We'll give the candidates a bit of an interview preparation as well, any information they might need to know about the trust and any pre-screen questions that you would like us to ask them. Um, once you've interviewed the candidates, the process becomes very much the same as uh, a direct applicant. So we advise that you process um, an offer letter very quickly because of course you want to ensure that you're giving yourself the best chance uh, of that candidate not taking another job at that stage. Um, and then we move on to the pre-employment checking phase as well. Okay, so at the uh, pre-employment check-in phase, it's important to note that the onus is actually on the NHS Trust, as you will be the direct employer of these doctors, um, to make sure that you do have all of the requisite documents um, which your internal processes will set out. That said, um, we're on hand and we've got a relocation uh, and compliance support team who will be able to assist you with any of those documentations as much or as little um, as you prefer us to take on. So uh, some trusts would like the complete oversight of their own process and we can just put you in touch with the doctors uh, and let you carry on with the, um, the pre-employment checks that you would always uh, partake in. Others prefer to pretty much outsource that to us so we can deal with um, every element of it so we can obtain references, do uh, police checking, um, occupational health, whatever it might be. So entirely up to you how much of that you, you want to take upon yourself um, and how much you prefer to give over to us. Um, the other point to note, of course, with these being international doctors, uh, is that there's a kind of relocation phase as well, which might not form part of your, your normal pre-employment checking. Um, we've got our own internal team that will deal with that. So they'll assist our doctors with their tier two visa applications, for example. Um, they'll help them find places to live, uh, arrange their travel for them, perhaps there's family situations, children that need placements in schools, or um, partners that also need to find jobs. We'll assist with all of that in-house um, to ensure that our doctors have a, a smooth transition um, to the UK. It's really, really important that they settle in uh, quickly um, uh, to ensure that they can get on with the job and there's no chance of them leaving. Okay, so by this point you're probably thinking, how much is this going to cost me? Um, and the answer is it will depend on uh, what grade of doctor you're looking for, what specialism of doctor you're looking for. So we'll set out an individual pricing point with you according to your needs. Uh, if there's multiple vacancies, of course, we'll work to a volume-based discount for you as well. Um, a few important things to note around the cost though. Uh, we do only charge a one-off introduction fee. So don't get this confused with agency locums. There's no ongoing hourly cost. We won't be charging you every year for this or anything like that. It's a one-off introduction fee. Usually, we would calculate it either as a percentage of uh, the doctor's first year salary um, or as a fixed fee, which a lot of trusts prefer to do if they want to uh, ensure that they've got a kind of oversight of their spend and exactly how much it's going to cost before the, the doctor actually commences with you. Um, also worth noting that there is a rebate scale in there as well, so should the doctor leave within the first few months, um, in actual fact we've, we've never had to use our own rebate scale, which we're quite proud of, um, but should it ever happen, should it ever arise, uh, you've got that in place to ensure that you would get some money back as well. Um, so there's no kind of risk of that. So one of the, the big things that we get a lot of feedback on is how little this costs in comparison to agency locum staff. Um, so if you're employing an agency locum at £70 an hour, £100 an hour, maybe even £150 an hour these days, um, you are guaranteed to save yourselves money over the course of a very short amount of time. So um, our fees, our one-off introduction fees, tend to be around 10% of hiring a locum for about six months. Um, it's a fraction of the cost and this leaves you open to a huge amount of cost saving. 
Uh, so if you like what you've heard and you are interested in embarking on an international recruitment campaign uh, or indeed if you've just got any questions about what we've talked about today um, or anything else at all, feel free to get in touch. Uh, Gabby will put our contact details up at the end of the video. Um, important to note that we are, uh, as of just recently, an on-framework provider for international permanent recruitment. Um, so we're very well equipped to answer any questions that you've got. Uh, and hopefully to, to begin an international recruitment campaign with your trust.